what is uh what's your favorite kiss album and your least favorite kiss album huh my favorite kiss album that's tough that's yeah cool. I like, can't. Like, like the van like the van halen thing i can't pick a, a favorite can't. van halen album from the first six um uh, and i god I, I don't even know if I can answer that by force because <laughs> the first, the first three records and destroyer rock and roll over all, I, I like them all equally. Uh, I guess a lot too would probably mean more to me because that was my first, yeah. but then that's just side three and four. The first record my mom actually bought for me after I discovered that I like this was the first album. Mm. So that one's going to sit pretty high with me. And if you think about it, like out of all of their albums, man, most of their standards that they played until their dying day was off that first record. I mean, Strutter, Deuce, Cold Gin, Firehouse, yeah. Black Diamond. Yeah. I had this conversation with somebody just the other day. When Whenever you hear discussion of great debut albums, everybody points to the first Van Halen. Everybody points to Appetite for Destruction. And rightfully so, I get it. But that first Kiss record, and I said the exact same thing, There's half of that album is in their set list today, yeah. if, not, if not more. So that album has stood the test of time very well. And I don't know that, I think a lot of Kiss, you know, fans tend to point to some of the more like my first album was destroyer so that one's that one's alive too for me that's the first one so it's the most sentimental you know um and people point to rock and roll over and my my other favorite is is dressed to kill but yeah i like dress i like dress to kill because it's it's very i don't there's something about the cleanliness of the sound it's a very tidy clean sounding record especially coming off of hotter than hell, which sounds murky. like murky. Sounds, yeah. 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 But that first kiss album for sure. It's, it's never mentioned in the conversation of great debut albums, but it, it most definitely Man, growing up destroyer was probably my least favorite. Cause I just, when I was a kid, it didn't sound like kiss to me. And then like all of those songs that were on alive Two, I like the alive Two version better. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, when I grew up and learned about making records and Bob Ezrin and all that stuff, I developed a, a much deeper appreciation for it. Yeah, yeah. Do definitely. you think that? Um, let's talk about the first Kiss record just for a second. I mean, I feel like I have I have some personal feelings that I realized much later on. I was too young to give review to what is actually happening in those songs and maybe what other bands in the late sixties that were influencing them to write those songs. But I feel like, you know, what, how, trying to form a question, you know, what do you know for fact and how do you feel much like I said later on about the influences those guys had uh, on each other and each other's influences when they were putting together, in my opinion, again, what a, re a record that encompasses proto-metal, uh, glam rock of that time, as well as glam rock of the future, um and even like shit that sounds like Nazareth and Humble Pie to me. What what's your what do you take from when you listen to that record they made when they were in their twenties? You know, I uh, it's funny. Uh, I I wrote a piece for uh, somebody's book that's coming out soon uh, about Kiss, and my everything I wrote actually wound up being a love letter to Peter Chris, basically. And until that moment, I didn't realize wow. like how wow. important Peter Chris was wow. to their music and how they sound. Because if you think about some of his drum parts, no other drummer would have played that. Like, like, like the chorus that got to choose. Most drummers would have went, ba, da, 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 and just played a straight beat. He's like, 
and he's basically playing a fucking drum solo in the chorus. Yeah, it's weird. Or a uh, hundred thousand years, you know, when he's like, and he even does the same thing in Detroit Rock City. Like, correct. Most rock drummers would just be like, you know, playing something mm-hmm. real straight. So it, I don't know, man. It, it it made their music a lot different. And then Paul Stanley's rhythm guitar playing, like he would throw, like if Ace is playing a riff, he would play like a weird third thing, like. Like for instance, on she when it gets to the part, it's like doom da 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 and then it repeats again, and then Paul plays this weird fucking third note thing over it. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know, like that's my favorite. That's my favorite part of that section. I really feel like they are unfairly picked on and beat up when they're really not that bad of a band. I mean, I don't see what in the seventies, everybody thought they sucked so bad. I can think of a lot of other bands that sucked worse than they did. I, I think they actually had kind of some interesting music. Yeah. Well, well, lyrics might've been a little, you know, well, yeah, hilarious at times, but we're t- it's rock and roll music. I mean, Led Zeppelin had some pretty fucking stupid lyrics sometimes too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Chuck, uh, Chuck Berry, you know, yeah, we- yeah, but but when you're young and that you know you realize you don't care. Real, I know that when I was young and a Kiss freak and was battered at school for wearing a Kiss T-shirt every day, uh, <laughs> beat up, ridiculed because you know I was into this thing called Kiss and no one else understood it that I was a fan of something. Everyone else is wearing a sports yeah. get up and I'm wearing a kiss get up. And they didn't understand that the lyrics were about something I didn't really care what it was about. I didn't know what it was about because I was so young. And then later on when I realized what it is they were about, you know, that's when hell broke loose. Um, but yeah, it's kind of interesting when you're young and you get, you're seven years old or whatever, and you're You're singing ladies room. Yeah. You're uh, or uh, nothing to lose or love. Good. Like, Oh, he's singing about his dick. Oh, he's singing about anal sex. Black diamond. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Room Uh, service. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The whole catalog basically. So it's just interesting what has you know, how that works. Shit, Van Halen and Aerosmith. I mean, with the young people that got into that. It, 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 older brothers are really guilty for turning their younger. So I, I have an older brother. He's six yeah. years older than me. But my brother was into, like, the new romantic British, mm-hmm. like, new wave yeah. thing. Like, he liked the Flock Seagulls and Duran Duran and all that stuff. It's like, the bathroom in our house was the great divide because my room was like fucking kiss Van Halen, Motley Crue, rat scorpions, you know, quiet, riot, twisted sister. And then you cross the bathroom and it's Duran Duran, a flock of seagulls, the fix and, you know, stuff wow. like Thompson twins, stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. Actually. Yeah. You guys kind of had your own thing. Yeah. And he played drums and I played guitar and, you know, somehow that would all, I don't know, it all worked together. Yeah. Did you, have, you, um, ha, have you ever thought of uh, the reason why you hear rock and roll all night in the grocery store that it's from Kiss Alive and not the studio version? I haven't, but I have noticed there's an Applebee's commercial that's out that uses the studio version. Really? Uh. Yeah. It's like, a, it's like a current commercial. I've seen it quite a few times now. Oh, wow. And, and it's not it's not that re-record that they did like 10 years ago. I know that they re-recorded a lot of hits for, you know, commercial use to where, right. you know, they'd make the money. And But no, it, it's the it's the original version. Wow. Yeah. That's a first. Never, yeah. You never hear the, the studio version. It's I think awesome. to answer your question, Jason, it's just because that live version was the one that became the bigger hit. Right. 
Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it became their anthem. It's a signature. Yeah. yeah. Well, that like, version, since, that yeah, version is lot, different. It's Alive yeah. was the album that, that broke the band. Like that yeah. version is, I guess, technically a little bit more of a hit than the studio version. 